It's just another insane viral video. A large group of criminals ransacked a Wawa store in Philadelphia. Although criminals, man, if that's truly what this was a group of, we got a lot of criminals. It was just a mob of young people running into a Wawa, which for those that aren't familiar, it's like a gas station and convenience store. They do sandwiches and coffee and stuff like that. Ransacking the place, leaving it trash, stealing whatever they want. And then I guess a bunch of them are fighting in the parking lot and standing around and screaming. And the funny thing is, while this is going on, there's like some people as part of the group being like, are you doing sandwiches? And it's like, yo, they are ransacking the store. The funny thing is, Democrats ignored it. They ignored it until it started impacting them. And now they're starting to freak out over it. I think the reality here is, well, we have this article from the New York Post. Progressives don't care about crime until it impacts them. Right now, they're backed into a corner. They're acting like crime isn't a problem because they know it is a problem and they don't want to admit it. So here's what I see. Over a long enough period of time, Democrats basically, they slowly drift towards becoming more and more upper class elites. Why? Because this level of crime only negatively impacts the poor. Now, of course, if you're wealthy, you're not going to want to go to these places. Sure. But if you're wealthy, you don't have to. So what ends up happening? The Democratic Party consists of a variety of people. Crime starts getting bad. Poor people are negatively impacted. They say, hey, can we fix this? And the rich Democrats who donate to the party, the donor class and the laptop class go, you're all racist. You're all bigots. Far right. So what happens? Eventually, these people say the Democrats don't represent me. Crime is destroying my neighborhood. Let's play this clip. Let's play this clip and then talk politics. Here you go. Take a look at this. There it is. Just ramp. Look at that. They're just throwing stuff for no reason. They're destroying the store. Standing on top of things. One chick appears to be like twerking. That's right. Twerking on top of the, the uh, countertop, I guess. Are you making food? Are you kidding, dude? Your, your group is here destroying the entire store. That's amazing. Do you want to live like this? We lived in the Philly area. This is why we don't anymore. Take a look at this. Everything's just destroyed. Smashed bottles. Garbage. The shelves are flipped over and just, it's just ransacked. It's crazy. That's why you can't have nice things. Dude filming goes outside and what do you see? People are like yelling. They're, they're fighting. They're throwing stuff. Okay. Look at that. Are they fighting right there? So this is why I say it's falling apart. You can't watch a video like this over and over again and conclude anything else. We have the story from CBS about 100 juveniles ransack Wawa in Philadelphia's Mayfair section. So uh, we lived in the Philly area prior to coming to here. And when the rioters crossed the bridge and made their way into the sleepy suburbs of South Jersey, look. It's only a few minutes drive from where we lived to the bridge into Philly. If you wanted to go to Philadelphia from where we were, it was literally like a 10 minute drive. Yeah, no joke. You get on the highway, you're on the highway for five minutes, and then you're over the bridge into Philly. So we were relatively close. You could drive only a couple of minutes to the river and just look across and see Philadelphia. It was nice while it lasted. Nice little suburb. There were some great little restaurants, really. And, and the mall was right there. We were by uh, um, Woodbury. Is it a mall over there? And uh, and then the, the rioters crossed the bridge. And so I was just like, dude, I'm not going to stick around for this. They, the, the, the Summer of Love riots crossed the bridge. I didn't think it was going to happen. So I left. This is exactly why. Why would you want to live like this? CBS reports a group of about 100 juveniles ransacked a Wawa in Philadelphia's Mayfair section Saturday night. The store is located on Roosevelt Boulevard and Tyson Avenue. Police are working with the Philadelphia school district to identify the young people seen in the video ransacking the store, but they are also pleading for the public's health, especially help, especially to the parents of these alleged vandals. Yeah, OK. Police are uh, cell phone video captures the chaos as juveniles stole and broke things throughout the store. That's right. Twerking on top of a countertop. That's it. R looters, riots and twerking on top of the counter. I want to just stress that. It's amazing. It was approximately 50 to 100 people 
Philadelphia Police Captain John J. Ryan said the Wawa was completely sacked by the kids coming inside and destroying things. And thankfully, there were no injuries to the Wawa personnel. You know what, man? I'm surprised because I don't know what the, the laws are in Philadelphia, but Pennsylvania is a fairly gun. Their gun laws ain't so bad. But I'm glad nobody got hurt here because I got to tell you, man, if there were people throwing stuff and trashing stuff in West Virginia, I'd imagine somebody would be bleeding out. No joke. I'm glad that didn't, that didn't happen. But you don't you don't come out here and walk into a store and start attacking, you know, just start vandalizing and destroying things without someone being like, stop what you're doing because you are going to get someone hurt. I mean, not only that, that chick that was twerking on the counter, she could have fallen off and gotten hurt. It's crazy. Then they're out in the parking lot. Police are working to identify the suspects who they say are facing serious charges that can include riot, criminal mischief, vandalism, theft, riot being a felony. Yeah, right. After they roller skated, they started fighting inside the Rolling Thunder. After they went inside Rolling Thunder, they started fighting and going crazy in Wawa and throwing chips. Unhinged. This is it. This is your civilization on the back end. That's it. Maybe it's the fall of the Roman Republic. Maybe it's the fall of the Roman Empire. I don't know. But eventually someone's going to cross that Rubicon. Assuming that is the case, that was the fall of the Roman Republic. Caesar crossing the Rubicon and then installing an autocracy, making himself emperor, basically. So we'll see. I don't know. I do know that crime is insane. Take a look at this. Woman, 33, fears she'll lose eye after being thrown across JFK airport subway station by homeless convicted murderer. As she made her way to work. Yo, this is crazy. Elizabeth Gomez was on her way to work at JFK at 5.15 a.m. September 20th when she was attacked at the airport station. Waheed Foster tried to start a conversation with her, but when she ignored him, he followed her and launched a savage attack. Foster, who was arrested for murdering his 82-year-old foster grandmother in a brutal beating at the age of 14, kicked and punched Gomez. One man tried to come to Gomez's aid, but Foster chased him away and resumed attacking Gomez. He was arrested as he tried to leave the station. Welcome to uh, your Democrat world. How much do you want to bet? And I'm, I'm trying to be nice here, but how much do you want to bet Elizabeth Gomez voted Democrat? I'm willing to bet. I don't know for sure. I'm just saying in a city that's 80 percent Democrat, you got a simple bet there. You put down 20 bucks, you're only going to win five because the likelihood is that she actually voted Democrat. Now, I don't know. But there's a there's a viral video going around. It's been going on for a while of this woman in her car screaming. And she's like, I just had to pay ninety four dollars for gasoline. Ah! Ah! And it's kind of just like sad, cringe and hilarious. She's complaining that she's like, I have to choose between gas and food. And what do you think I'm going to pick? Ninety four dollars, ninety four dollars of gasoline for my check at Costco. Ah! And then all of a sudden, I don't know where she goes. The religious right did this. The religious right. What? Are you nuts? The religious right wants your gas to be cheap. They say, drill, baby, drill. That was Sarah Palin. These people are psychotic. Come on. It's the religious right who's trying to drill, baby, drill. What are you talking about? Sarah Palin comes out and this is back in like 2008, drill, baby, drill. Yo, if the Republican religious right had their way, gas would be 50 cents because they'd be pumping oil like crazy and profits would be through the roof. Then Joe Biden comes in. He's like, Come on, man. We're going to ban gas. Do not have a pressure. And then they ban bans fracking, shuts down the Keystone Pipeline, and <laughs> your gas prices skyrocket. You also had the Ukraine uh, uh, war, where under Trump, Putin doesn't make any moves. Then as soon as, Biden, as soon as Biden gets in, it's war. War, higher gas prices. Europe, higher gas prices, higher energy costs across the board. But these people are so insane and so ignorant that they literally will vote for a guy who's like, I'm going to stop producing oil. And they're like, OK, that's a good thing. Then your gas prices skyrocket. and They go, must be the Republicans fault. I love it. I love that they come out and they're like, Republicans are to blame because they're driving up gas prices with record and making record profits. And I'm like, dude, sure, I get that. I'm not discounting it. But you literally voted for the guy who said he was going to stop the production of oil. And now you're complaining it costs more absolutely incredible world that we live in. They keep voting for politicians who are like, we should release criminals. Now John Fetterman in PA comes out and he's like, we should release a bunch of criminals. And it's like, okay, you realize you're gonna get more crime. Now I'm, I'm all in favor of 
Fetterman and, and, and uh, the governor, they have a plan to pardon nonviolent defenders. But you got to realize maybe now is not the time. OK, like I'm in favor of people convicted on marijuana charges, having their charges vacated or commuted or dropped or whatever. But you got to understand some of these people were pleading down for more violent offenses. Some of these people maybe didn't get caught engaging in violent offenses. So it's not so easy. I wish it was because I don't think nonviolent defenders should be in jail. They should be in house arrest or something like that. But maybe it's not, now is not the time when Philadelphia crime is through the roof. Look at this. Disturbing moment. Gunman points weapon at Philadelphia subway passengers head. SEPTA cops launch probe as the Dem led city records 750 shootings in summer of mayhem. I'm glad I left. I'm also kind of worried that I did. You know why? See, I was saying this when I was in New York. I was like, it's going to get bad, so I'm going to leave. And we go to South Jersey, the Philly suburbs. Then I, and, and then it did. And then you had you have you have rioting in New York. You have uh, homicides through the roof. There were some bombings. That's that was the catalyst for me to leave. People got uh, two cops got executed. I was there for that on my street. And I'm just like, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. Go to South Jersey, start seeing the crime escalate. And I said, I don't want to be here. It's going to get worse. Lo and behold, Philadelphia, all of it just getting substantially worse. So we move out to the middle of nowhere to uh, West Virginia. It's not really the middle of nowhere. It's Harper's Ferry, basically. And Harper's Ferry is awesome. And now what I'm seeing is nationwide this high risk for some kind of civil war, civil conflict. And people are saying, no, you're wrong. And I'm just like, yeah, you know what? Maybe, dude. But man, I was right about some other stuff that. Uh, and so I don't know. I was wrong about a lot, too. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I was wrong. But I'm kind of worried that this is going to get substantially worse. Check this out. The video, which went viral on Reddit and Twitter, shows a gunman sticking up and pointing his weapon at the head of a man waiting on the subway. Both Philadelphia police and officials for SEPTA told Daily Mail the incident happened in July. A SEPTA spokesperson said that no shots were fired during the incident and no one was injured. Spokespersons for both the police and transit say that no arrests have been made and the event is still under investigation. It's bonkers, man. Here you go. Corinne Jean-Pierre blasted for non-answers on crime. She is so bad at this. She really, really is the most awful, one of the worst. I mean, Jen Psaki, at least she was a circle back girl. She'd be like, I'll circle back. I'll circle back. And then she wouldn't. Or sometimes she would. But Jen Psaki, she'd answer. She'd answer. She'd give her her spin, whatever. I think the whole White House press secretary is a big waste of time. The, the press briefings are a waste of time, mind you. But Kareem Jean-Pierre is just so insanely bad at this. It's a sure. They don't care anymore. They literally just don't care. They're like, put so put anybody there. Who cares? And then you get this. And she's the worst. Non-answers. It's like, does Biden think crime is bad? It's not a yes or no question. It's very much a question of what has to be done. What has he done to make sure that cities have the funding and they need to protect their community? What does Biden think America's big cities are safe? It is a yes or no question. You can say the answer is no. The answer is it's it's not an absolute. I mean, let, let, let me let me let me let me explain how you do this, right? Let me let me mansplain. Here's what I'd say. I'd say, you know, I think Biden would probably say the answer is no. I think he would probably say the answer is no. But I don't want to come off like it's an absolute apocalyptic no. It's a uh, you know things are getting bad, and we see we see the crime rates, which is why he's taking action. Biden has provided funding, blah blah blah. That's how you answer the question. You answer the question. You, you, you be authentic. Come on. You can say Biden thinks the cities are safe. You could even say this. You could say yes. And in fact, say yes. Say absolutely. Joe Biden thinks the big cities are safe. While we are seeing a rise in crime, action has been taken that has greatly mitigate this. And you can see this here, here and here. Have answers. Have some answers. Don't just be like, I don't know. You know, he's doing something. Something's happening. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I love it. Progressives only care about crime after they've been robbed or are about to lose an election. The streets of American cities aren't safe for one of the great big men in NBA history. Hall of Fame center Bill Walton, six foot 11, the proud pot smoking Bon Vivant, who has openly supported BLM and a host of other progressive causes, causes, causes sorry, has suddenly turned tough on crime. Why? For the same reason so many Americans have, he was a victim of it. In a fiery letter, to San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria, Walton wrote, once again, while peacefully riding my bike early the Sunday morning in Balboa Park, I was threatened, chased and assaulted by, a home, by the homeless population in our park. Once again, you've done nothing and continue to do nothing. Funny how an up close and personal experience with violent crime can change one's perspective. Or dare we say, as Irving Crystal once famously quipped, mug one's reality. 
And it's not just the former hoop heroes who are hopping off the soft on crime bandwagon in L.A. Mayoral, mayoral hopeful Rep. Karen Bass, who once had never seen a police department she didn't want to defund, is now worried about her own safety. Bass said in a debate months ago that she does not feel safe in L.A., but after her home was robbed and two guns, which she had for protection, were stolen, the mayor says, I did feel safe until my safety was shattered like so many Angelinos. You vile scumbag. You in L.A. with two guns and then you have the nerve to say when those were stolen, you no longer feel safe. These people are despotic psychopaths. But you know what? Fine. If you're stupid enough to vote for them, you shouldn't be carrying a weapon anyway. Now, I don't really think that. I think everyone has a right to keep in bare arms. But you know what? You reap what you sow. You vote for these people. You vote for Democrats in California. They take away your your protection, your right to self-defense. And then they have the nerve to spit in your face and say, I felt safe when I had guns. But those were taken away. Absolutely incredible. These vile scumbags will come out and vomit all over our political system, allowing crime to run rampant until someone comes for them. Absolute disgusting hypocrisy. This is why I got away from the cities, because this is what you deal with on a daily basis. These pathetic scumbags, they'll come out and be like, I have armed guards. Why should I care about gun rights? It's what it's, 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 it's the way it works. You want to hire private security? You can outsource the keeping and bearing of arms. Why? Guns aren't banned. Private security, they can have guns. You can go and take your test and get your, your license to carry up as a security guard. And there are restrictions. Here's the funny thing. Here's how it works in Maryland. Maryland is a scumbag state. If you are a private citizen, it's extremely difficult to get a weapon. You also can't conceal or open carry. Now, they claim that they allow concealed carry permits, but you have to jump through hoops that are not impossible to accomplish. Fortunately, a Supreme Court ruling came down. Now they have to, but I, I doubt they still will. Here's how it works. Let's say uh, you live in Maryland. OK, you can have a weapon on your property. You got to get a handgun qualification. You've got to get uh, uh, you got to take a test. If you want to buy like a rifle or something, I think you can just as a resident of Maryland buy a, a rifle. Not too uh, difficult. You fill out the forms, you do the background check, but you can't carry it around. You can't bring it out with you. So uh, no safety for you off your property. If you are on your property and someone threatens you, you have to retreat to your property into the building. If they then try to breach the building, you are then allowed to defend yourself. New Jersey's worse, but it's how it works for security guards. The wealthy ultra elites have manufactured a system in which you can't keep and bear arms unless you are serving someone else. For the most part, you can hire a security guard in Maryland. And for the most part, they can bear arms once they get to work. So if you're a security guard and you're hired by one of these wealthy elites, these these Democrat donors and anti-gun people, you show up to their property. You've got your guns. You can carry the guns in the in the process of defending them, but not open carry or concealed carry in public without special licensing. So for many security guards, not all. Once you leave work, you can no longer protect yourself. You have to separate the magazines, clear the, clear, the right, clear the weapon, separate them and place them in the trunk. Then you can leave. You're allowed to transport the weapon to and from work. That means that if you're a bodyguard for a wealthy liberal elite, while you're on the property, you're armed. And if anyone comes for them, you can defend them with lethal force. But when you leave that same person, let's say, let's say a hitman, he's like, we got to go after this, this wealthy guy. And so they're like, oh, no, look at that. He's got a bodyguard. I can't do nothing. He's got a guy, armed guards. OK, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get the guard first. So then the armed guard disarms himself and leaves, gets rammed, jumps out of his car, runs to the trunk, trying to get his weapon and then gets grabbed and shaken down or whatever. Because you can't protect yourself. Now, I'm sure there may be some rules, you know, you could you you. you you could probably get a concealed carry permit. It's just more difficult. But the point ultimately is this. Rich people can say, you go get your weapon. You assume the liability. You protect me and I won't have to think about it. In the long run, I think it's still a losing position. But this is what they do. Former Boston Celtic, is it Celtics, Celtics player Bill Walton. He has the nerve to complain when he supports BLM. They want to defund the police. And now you're mad? Yes. Um, 
Bill, uh, uh, I'd like you to meet the consequences of your own actions. So you know what? Enjoy it. You are now reaping what you have sown. And it's funny, if, you know, if I was the mayor, I'd respond to him being like, are you kidding? We did everything you wanted. You supported this. Spare me. I'd make it public. If I got a letter from this guy and he was like, you know, I got attacked by a homeless guy. I'd be like, I see your politics. I'd, I'd, I'll put the response on the front page of the newspaper. And everyone can see here's my response to you. You voted for more crime. Now you have the nerve to complain about it. I hope you are learning what this means, and I hope you are adjusting your politics. Otherwise, you're going to get more of it. But at the end of the day, I suppose for these people, it'll just come come a time where they walk into a Wawa and some woman is standing up on a counter and twerking while people ransack the place. And you're like, I just wanted a burrito. Yeah, too bad. You're not going to get one because you supported this. You voted for this. What did you think was going to happen? And they keep doing it. They act like they're all righteous and justice, right, righteous and just. And then we see it with the BLM riots when that guy was in Beverly Hills tweeting like, yeah, riot. Blah, 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 blah. And then wait a minute. They're starting to come to my neighborhood. No, go back. Go downtown. Of course, for those that don't know, downtown L.A. is where most of the poor people live. So this guy who lived in Beverly Hills was cheering for rioters destroying a poor neighborhood and then panicking when they came to his. Welcome to American politics. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. over at youtube.com slash Timcast. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.